bow of the violin is a bit tricky, but it's very important. If you don't have a great bow hold, it's going to be very difficult to get a good sound. Um, so first of all, if you let your hand drop, like this, you can see that the hand just kind of makes this natural shape. Not like this, but just like this. And you'll notice, if you turn your hand, that the thumb is basically opposite the first finger here, the index finger. To hold the bow, we want this natural shape, but we want the thumb to be almost touching your third finger, or the ring finger, like this. And so, basically, all we want to do is we want to hang, like this, if you kind of splat your hand on, and feel like you're a monkey hanging onto a branch. Feel the weight of your arm going into the bow. And you want the middle parts of your fingers to be on the top of the bow, not the tips. We really want to grab the bow at the tips, but we don't support the bow at the tips. It's with the middles of the fingers. So if I show you. So right about, right about here. And then we want the little finger on top to be curved and round. And the thumb, like I said before, is going to make a circle almost to the third finger. It's going to be in between the second and third fingers here. So the thumb, it could be straight, but for now, if we're starting, just a little bit of a curve. And you can see how the little finger is curved here because there's a lot of work going on. If I lift my little finger, the bow comes up. This little finger acts like a seesaw. Now, if you're still quite small, you can try um, one of the beginner bow grips, which is you put your thumb on this metal bit, which I believe is called the ferrule. So you can see there's a corner. So you put your thumb right on that corner and you make the bow hold. And I usually get people to put the little finger so that it sits right over the eye. A lot of people want to put their little finger on the screw. But that's a bit too far back. So try putting the little finger over the eye of the bow. And remember, the middles of your fingers are what makes contact with the bow stick so that we have gravity going down. We don't want to sort of be squeezing the bow into the hand. We want to avoid this kind of grabbing motion. So the, the ends of your fingers aren't really doing a whole lot. We could just chop those off and you'd still be fine to play the violin. And then, if everything is nicely balanced and you hold the bow straight up, you can do the fling test, or the ping test, and you can see that the bow will snap back if it's balanced properly. So that's what you can do to check. And so this is going to work the inside of your hand, so you should feel this part of your muscle getting a good workout here, and also the thumb as well. It does take some muscle to use uh, to, to bow properly. And remember, at the end of the day, we want everything to be flexible. Everything's got to be able to move. So if you can't move yet, we need to make sure that you're not squeezing too tightly, but we'll, we will have to build some strength so that you will be able to be flexible. Because the bow hold, it doesn't stay in the same place. It's not static. It actually changes when you're changing direction and depending on what part of the bow you're in. So if I'm, if I'm at the frog, my bow hold is going to look a little bit more like this with the little finger doing a bit more work. Whereas if I'm at the tip, the little finger isn't going to be doing very much at all because all the weight is already going to be close to the ground. But the bow hold never stays the same. But we sort of have to start from a sense of balance. So once we get that balance, then we can work on mobility and flexibility, but making sure that nothing's locked. And then you need to make 10 bow holds. Good luck.